Hello from USS Fort Worth, a U.S. Navy warship currently deployed to the U.S. 7th Fleet and operating in the South China Sea. I am Commander Matt Kawas, the commanding officer of Fort Worth and Littoral Combat Ship Crew 103, and I'd like you to welcome you to our ship. Thank you for joining us for this tour. You may wonder why I'm wearing these headphones. Shipboard life can be noisy sometimes, so these headphones are best for us to be able to hear each other and speak with each other. We're very excited to give you this virtual tour today. It's a first in our Navy, and it's something pretty cool for our sailors to be a part of. We're also very proud of what we do and are happy to give you a glimpse of what life is like for us on deployment. So let me set the scene for you before I turn it over to my tour guide. It may be morning for those of you viewing us from the U.S., but right now it is 2300 on board the ship. That's 11 p.m. in military time. USS Fort Worth is currently on a 16-month rotational deployment to the Asia-Pacific. The ship left its home port of San Diego back in November and arrived in the 7th Fleet in December. Our unique manning structure allows us to deploy nearly twice as long as other U.S. Navy warships because we swap crews about every four months. My crew the Crew 103 Rough Riders, along with Helicopter Maritime Strike Squadron Detachment 2 and Surface Warfare Mission Package Detachment 1, arrived on board Fort Worth in February in Singapore. We took over from the littoral combat ship Crew 104 Juggernauts, who had sailed the ship over to Singapore and shortly after arriving spent the first half in, of January supporting the search for the missing Air Asia flight. Since assuming command of Fort Worth, my crew and I have had a chance to uh, travel to Northeast and Southeast Asia, visiting countries such as South Korea, where we participated in an annual U.S. and Republic of Korea Navy exercise, and also getting a chance to visit Japan. This past week, we've been in Vietnam, working with our naval counterparts from the Vietnamese People's Navy. We also had a chance to enjoy some quality liberty in Da Nang and had a great time meeting all the people there. After several days in port, we got underway from Da Nang this morning and had a chance to spend a few hours operating underway with other ships from the Vietnamese People's Navy. It was a great experience and we learned so much from operating with our counterparts. We will be conducting routine operations for the next few days before we, in this region before we return to Singapore for a routine maintenance stop. And with that, I'm sure you're very interested to get on with the tour, so I will pass you over to Petty Officer Second Class, Connor Minto, our Embarked Mass Communications Specialist, who will be your tour guide tonight. Enjoy your tour. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm uh, MC2 Connor Minto, and I'll be walking you guys around the ship, and uh, we'll get this started right now. All right, so uh, as you can see, a lot of the ship right now has these uh, has the red lights on, and uh, and that's what we do at nighttime. It uh, the lights don't go as far, and we're going to peek into the bridge right now, where we have three people operating as a bridge team. We have uh, the engineering console right here where the entire ship uh, engineering plant can be controlled. And then we have two, uh, two people driving the ship and uh, keeping an eye out on the water. Here we'll take a little closer look in here. So underway, it only takes three people to fully run the ship. With those three people, they can, uh, they can get everything they need to get done to get us underway. Here's some memorabilia from the city of Fort Worth. Right here. They're really good about sending, uh, sending care packages during the holidays. Uh, the city of Fort Worth is uh, really supportive of uh, the sailors on board and uh, the ship, uh, their namesake. Right now we're going to go to the airborne mission zone and speak with Lieutenant Commander Hill. He is the air boss with Helicopter Maritime Strike Squadron 35. Here he is right here. Um, 
I'm going to pass you over to him, and he's going to speak about what's going on here in the uh, Airborne Mission Zone. Sir, how's it going? Here you go. All right. Thanks, MC2. First off, welcome to the Airborne Mission Zone. As MC2 said, I am Lieutenant Commander Ted Hill, uh, in charge of all aviation-related matters on board LCS. Uh, if you'll pardon me for one second, we'll go downstairs and we'll take a closer look at both aircraft that we have. All right, in the foreground you can see that uh, we've got the unmanned area vehicle called Fire Scout. And out on the flight deck, and I think you can just see it, is the MH-60 Romeo. So the MH-60 Romeo is the workhorse of the Navy's fleet. It's found on numerous ships throughout the Navy. What makes us special is this here in the front ground, the Fire Scout. My squadron, HSM-35, was specially designed to operate both manned and unmanned aircraft. We're the first type in the Navy that's designed to do this. That gives me, as the air boss, the flexibility to both fly the manned aircraft, the unmanned aircraft, or both aircraft simultaneously to meet the mission. And as you can see, my guys who are on board, there's 24 of us, are cross-trained in both aircraft. So the pilots fly both, the maintainers fix both, and that allows the great flexibility to do our mission. Try to give you a better shot all the way out to the flight deck. And with that, I'll hand you back over to MC2, and I hope you enjoy the rest of our tour. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, now that we're done with the AMZ, we're going to make our way down to uh, what on other ships is referred to as Damage Control Central. It's another location where they can control the engineering plant here on the boat. Let's go. Here's our mess decks that we're going to be walking through, but we'll come back to this. We got a menu. It's where they, uh, where our cooks put all of our, uh, all the chow that we'll be eating for the day. So a lot of these doors that you'll see here. They're, uh, they're referred to as watertight doors. They got big latches on them, and that way you can open them. And uh, it's to, it helps isolate if there's an incident, if there's a, a fire on board, or smoke, or water. It uh, helps keep that uh, keep that isolated. All right, here's our damage control central. We have our uh, master chief on board, and uh, sir, uh, master chief, are you gonna? Speak on this. Sure. I'm going to pass you over to Master Chief here, and he's going to tell you about what goes on in here. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what uh, depending on what time zone you're in. Welcome to USS Fort Worth. This is the engineering department we call the brains of engineering. This is Central Control Station. This is where all the good stuff happens. All right. As you see in front of you, we have a, a three-headed console. This is where you can monitor, start, stop. Um, Pretty much almost everything in engineering. I know kids at home, all you gamers, three consoles to play games on, but I assure you, you cannot do that on this. Anyway, like I say, in order to be in an underway ship, you actually have to be self-sustainable. That means you have to make your own electricity, you have to make your own water, believe it or not, even your own suit. You have to collect your own sewer. So that's something the engineering has got to take care of. So on the consoles, we can literally monitor our electrical plant status, we can go through look at the uh, propulsion plant status, even our fire pumps. We can start and stop fire pump from the uh, NPCs. Uh, alarms, any kind of alarms that comes up. Uh, the ship is so advanced and requires such little amount of people, there's only two engineers on watch at any time. So you have the, uh, the uh, RCO who is basically in charge of the watch and the, the uh, engineering department for the uh, watch section. And then you have one rover down here we like to spread it out and put at least two people on watch because it's a lot of running around, going from space to space to monitor equipment even locally. So as uh, 
as these alarms comes up, but as you can see, uh, we had a fuel purifier alarm come up, so the RCO got a hold of the on uh, watch uh, rover to go down, and they'll be reset the alarm, find it out what it, what it uh, alarmed for, and get it back online. And uh, one of the other things we have to be self-sufficient about is, um, say, at home, your little brother, little sister decides they want to make lunch. All of a sudden, they catch the they catch the uh, stove on fire. Well, we don't have the luxury of calling 911 here, so we actually have fire we have fire indicators all over the ship. That's one of them over here. That's one of them up there, and it's multiple all throughout the ship. You're going to have at least one in every space. If it's a bigger space, you can have multiple. So if there's smoke or if there's even a fire, it will be, uh, alarm, give the uh, watch standard indication, and then we can get somebody down there, look at the space. And if there is a fire, we go to everybody on the ship is a trained firefighter. So this is where we actually um, combat the fire. This is where the person in charge, the casualty control officer, is going to plot. We actually have the plots behind here. We log it in there. We do it the manual way. We also have the advanced way. We can log on our MPCMS and go to our DCAMs, and we can log in and we can plot everything through DCAMs. One of the nice things about it is all of our repair lockers has the same um, one single screen console there. So as the CCO plots uh, what's going on throughout the ship fire or flood or structural damage, it comes up on the other two screens so the repair locker leaders over there actually see what's going on as well. Communications is everything. It doesn't matter if you're fighting a fire or if you're just uh, doing a normal watch station. So as you can see, we have all sorts of communication um, devices in here. And for some reason, at any time we lose control of the uh, pilot house, loses control of the ability to maneuver the ship, you can take control down here in, in uh, CCS and you can actually uh, control the ship using our backups. And, of course, we have the instruments to guide us where we need to go. So, in a nutshell, this is where all the magic stuff in engineering happens. Thank you, Master Chief. All right, now we're going to make our way to the medical department. But, uh, but first, we're going to stop at a door. Unfortunately, I can't take you back there. But this is our mission control center. That's where, uh, that's where everyone's on the radars. They have the ability to control all of our, uh, all of our weapons that we have on board, the weapon systems. They can control our 57 millimeter gun. We have two 30 millimeter guns that they can fire and uh, operate from there. So, wish I could take you in there, but gonna gonna have to pass on that right now. So we'll get you down to medical and uh, we'll get to speak with Doc. Over there in the mission control center is uh, they can also control the fire scout that Air Boss was talking to you about. All right, so we're making our way. So like uh, like the skipper was saying, it's uh, it's pretty pretty late here. A lot of the sailors are sleeping, but a lot of them are up too, drinking coffee. All right. Here's a look at our galley, but we'll come back here and talk a little bit more about that in a second. So also, as you can see, as a ship, kind of like Master Chief was saying, everyone on the ship is a trained firefighter, and there's firefighting equipment everywhere because fires can happen anywhere, anytime, so everyone has to be ready. So here we are in medical. We'll say hi to Doc. How's it going, How's it going Chief? It's going great. How are you? Going good. So I'm going to pass you on over to Doc, and she is uh, she'll, she's going to tell you about what she does. Here you go, Doc. Hold yep. on me for a minute. Sure. Hello, everyone out there. My name is uh, Chief Hospital Corpsman Sylvia Fawson. I am our medical asset here on the crew. I've been in the Navy for 16 years and I've been what's called an independent duty corpsman for four. I'm not a physician, but the Navy has sent me through extensive training to learn how to take care of sailors out to sea, independent of a physician. Um, so our crew members train um, so that they can help me respond to medical emergencies and they do a great job of that. Um, I also work with the crew prior to deployment and during deployment to make sure that they're nice and healthy. If they happen to get sick or injured during a deployment, they'll come here to the medical spaces so that I can take care of them. If they happen to get really sick, I actually have a ward in the back, which I'll quickly show you in a minute, where they can stay here to recover. 
under the rare circumstance that I'm unable to provide care for them, I will uh, secure them, stabilize them, and we actually have the capability to medevac them to like a hospital um, on land. In addition to providing health care, I'm also very active in many of our safety programs on board to include um, helping my culinary specialists, our cooks here, to ensure that the food that we get delivered to us is safe to eat, is stored properly, and is prepared properly. Now, I don't have to help them much. The cooks do a phenomenal job at that and cook some amazing meals. I also work with our engineers to ensure that the water that they make every day is safe for my sailors or my shipmates to drink. And we also monitor the temperature in many of our very warm areas to ensure that it's safe for the sailors to work in. Um, now I'll show you our small medical space that we have on board. And have a great This is my exam table. And on the back wall there, you can see where we store things, where I have all of my emergency medical supplies. I keep a scale here because what medical doesn't have a scale? And then I keep medical records and more supplies back in the corner. I'm going to move a little slowly for you here so that it doesn't get too blurry. I keep a lot of my meds here. And then if you see in the back, I have two racks in case I have sailors that get sick and need to stay with me for 24-hour care. Hey, thanks for visiting us. We appreciate your time and uh, have a great day. I'm going to pass you back over to MC2 now. Thanks, Doc. All right. Now we're going to make our way to one of the repair lockers. There's two repair lockers on board, and this is where the sailors will jump into action, put on their, all, their, uh, all their protective equipment, and go fight any fires that are here and make sure our ship is, uh, ship is stay safe. And, all right, here we go. Chief, you uh, going gonna to show us around here what we got going on in the repair locker? Welcome to Repair Three. Actually, I'll, I'll give you the headphones, Chief, and you can uh, you can talk. Here we go. We got Repair Three here. Uh, over here, we have uh, firefighting coveralls, ensemble for major class alphas and Bravo fires. This actually is pretty thick material. It's also steam blocking which is pretty nice for the firefighters in the space, keeps them cool. Over here we've got the uh, SCBA mask, which they'll wear in the toxic environment. And this goes in conjunction with the uh, Scott Air Pack down there. That's a 45-minute bottle used for firefighting or uh, toxic gas environments. In the corner over there we've got firefighting hoses and boots, uh, personal protective gear, Hoses we can run throughout the ship for firefighting purposes. We have uh, all kinds of kits for different kinds of casualties on board. From flooding, uh, dewatering, toxic gas, firefighting, emergency access, and rescue. Uh, we've also got desmoking for those toxic environments of smoke and gases that are hazardous to personnel on board. And then we've got our uh, search and rescue equipment, breathable air for going into confined spaces. And that's pretty much it for a repair locker. Anything that can go wrong, we'll try to fix it. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. You have a good night. You as well. All right, Chief. All right. We're going to make our way over to the galley where our cooks cook the, uh, the phenomenal food that Doc was talking about. Here's some of our sailors right here, saying hi to their families. Sorry, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of leaning around where the ship's rocking. It is a uh, kind of a, it is a smaller ship, and we get some waves out there, and uh, every <laughs> everything starts moving. So this is CS1 right here. He's one of the cooks on board. This is this is his galley. He says hello to all his. You want to talk? You can say, say a few words here. How's everybody doing today? I want to uh, welcome you guys on board the USS Fort Worth. I'm CS1 Philip Justic. I've been on board for over four years. Best job in the world. 
Have a good tour. So CS1, he's he's a he's a cook, but he's a he's a culinary specialist. But because there's so few sailors on board, and that's how LCS operates, everyone has multiple jobs. So even though he's in here and he's in the galley cooking during flight operations, he comes out and uh, he has a special suit he wears. He's a hot suit man. Uh, that way, if there is an incident on our flight deck, he can go out and uh, recover any personnel that are in a in a in an aircraft that's run into a situation. Here's Senior Cole. You'll see him again. He'll be answering questions for us. We got coffee machine. That's probably the most important piece of equipment I think on the boat right there. Uh, keeps everyone running and keeps us all happy. So that's good. Um, so sailors will come in here. We have a pretty pretty good morale, welfare, and recreation. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, department. Depart <laughs> not really a department, but it's a uh, organization, and they keep uh, keep the sailors happy. They provide games on the mess decks. They'll have movie nights. We had a movie night on the flight deck the other night. We got to go on the flight deck. Uh, they had a projector playing a movie out there, uh, eating popcorn. They'll set up games, bingo, trivia nights. Here we go. I'm actually from the state of Texas myself, so I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. I like to eat at this table, look at my state every day, so that's nice. Uh, let's see here. We got we got our mailbox, just like anyone else. You know, everyone has to get their mail somehow. So uh, a lot of these countries we hit, a lot of cool ports that we get to go to. Everyone that I I, I like to personally get some uh, postcards. I know a lot of other people do, and we can just pop them in that box. It'll take them uh, take them off the ship. What well, we'll, so how we do that when we're underway? We need to you know we need food. We need to refuel, just like a you know just like a car would need to do. So uh, another ship will come up to us, and uh, we call it a replenishment at sea, and another ship drives along, they pull alongside of us, and then uh, we have these special, these special rifles that shoot over these, these lines, and then we start pulling lines from one ship to another ship, and fuel lines, and then we start pumping. Let's see here, we got, uh, we got our CO, our XO couple other people on the ship and they're gonna we got some questions via social media and they're gonna help us answer them so we're gonna go through these right now and uh, we'll get started so I'm gonna pass you on we're gonna switch this camera I'm so sorry I'm terrible with this technology so let's see if we can get this I think I'm I think I'm on the front camera now so I'm gonna pass this on and we'll get our questions answered so uh, here we go sir sorry. all right I think we got it All right, good evening, everyone. I'm Ensign Lamerson. I'm the Electro on board the ship. And so we're just going to answer a few social media questions. First question comes from RacerXRoberts, the Twitter user. Uh, he asks, are you capable of using anti-submarine warfare on board the ship? So uh, with LCS, we have three mission packages. We have anti-submarine warfare, mine counter mission uh, warfare, and also service warfare. Uh, right now, we have the service warfare mission package attached and anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasure warfare, still in the testing and development phases. So with the surface warfare, we, uh, we have uh, two Mark 50 30 millimeter guns. We have a visit, visit board search and seizure team on board and two 11 meter rib boats, as well as an air department with an MH-60 Romeo helicopter and the Fire Scout, which is the drone helicopter. So I'm going to pass on the, the tablet to Senior Cole, who's going to answer some more questions. Hello, world. I'm uh, Command Senior Chief Craig Cole. I've uh, been on board for a couple years now. I got a question uh, from a Facebook user, Justin B. Uh, he asked, with uh, so few sailors uh, as the core crew, 50 originally, most maintenance duties were shifted to civilian maintenance uh, crews on shore. How does that impact everyday condition of the ship? the crew and their ability to perform their jobs. Well, basically, the uh, maintenance schedule in general terms is sailors still do maintenance on board. Uh, we share responsibility with the civilian community, which allows us the opportunity to maintain ownership uh, as well as uh, get the job done on board. Um, with our ability to perform our jobs and the maintenance, is the, the equipment itself, the equipment operates great. Uh, we've had great continuity with the civilian maintenance counterparts. 
uh, which allows us to be out here in the Seventh Fleet area of operation and perform our uh, deployment duties as assigned. Uh, for our sailors, uh, with 50 core crew members, we actually have 55 core crew, uh, 24 mission package, or 24 aviation detachment, and 19 mission package. That gives us uh, around 100 sailors uh, to keep the ship clean, uh, do our maintenance, and conduct the mission, uh, whatever we're assigned by our operational commanders. Uh, we love what we do. We have the best crew in the Navy, and uh, appreciate you guys being able to have this opportunity. So thank you, and I'm going to pass it off to the Executive Officer, Commander Mike Desmond. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, as the case may be. It's uh, nearly midnight here. Uh, my name is Commander Mike Desmond. I'm the Executive Officer on board uh, the mighty Fort Worth, and I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that uh, came to us via social media recently. The first is uh, from Twitter, a Twitter user named FordGal15. Uh, FordGal15 asks, how long is your deployment for coming home? But um, this deployment, as the captain mentioned initially um, in his opening remarks, the deployment for the ship is actually about 16 months long, which is about twice as long as uh, notional surface warfare uh, ship deployment schedules, which is, uh, have been up to nine months long. So ours is about 16 months for the ship, but that's broken up between crews, which is why we're able to uh, have such a lengthy deployment for this ship, have it overseas for so long. So the, uh, the crews serve approximately four months overseas um, and this follows the new 321 manning initiative that the uh, LCS squadron implemented recently. And that stands for three crews, two ships, and one ship always forward deployed. So we have uh, three crews for instance, we're one of them, crew 103. The two ships we're currently using are USS Freedom, which is back in San Diego, and USS Fort Worth, which is forward deployed here uh, to the Seventh Fleet area of responsibility. Uh, that allows uh, obviously a uh, greater turnover but uh, it permits uh, many more crews to have experience, operational experience overseas. So um, we have uh, served about half of our deployment now. We deployed as the captain mentioned in February. We'll be returning back to San Diego to our families in late May at which time a Crew 102 will relieve us, we'll have an exchange of command on board, and they will follow with the rest of Fort Worth's deployment and the remainder of their mission, the ship's mission for the deployment. We also have a question that came via Facebook from Facebook user Jim Y. He asked, what uh, tactical advantages does this ship have? Well, littoral combat ship, a relatively new uh, type of ship, uh, very different in many regards than uh, traditional ships such as cruisers, uh, fast frigates, or destroyers. Uh, the main tactical advantages though that the uh, littoral combat ship has uh, first is, uh, as you can tell by the name, uh, littoral, and that is that the ship has a uh, very shallow draft, about uh, 5 meters or 15 feet, which is less than half of what the uh, destroyers or cruisers have meaning we can operate relatively close to the uh, shores or in the littoral regions of the world. Uh, one of the other tactical advantages we have is speed. Uh, the ship is faster than just about every other ship in the Navy. Uh, we have speeds over 40 knots. Um, added to that, great speed and shallow draft is our maneuverability. We have water jet propulsion here. We don't have rudders or propellers like most other ships do. We actually have steerable water jet and boost um, propulsion systems. Um, basically like a jet ski, that's right. Uh, so that maneuverability and then add to those the uh, mission package. Um, electrical officer mentioned the surface warfare mission package that we have on board now. But in the span of just a few days, we could actually change out that mission package based on the uh, operational commander's requirements and the uh, mission, uh, what the mission calls for, and change out to either the anti-submarine warfare or mine mission uh, areas, provided that logistical support was readily available. 
So speed, maneuverability, shallow draft, mission package, change out, and flexibility. And also we have, as you heard the Airbus talk about, our helicopter detachment, the first uh, composite helo detachment to deploy on an LCS, uh, brings unmanned aerial vehicle and a manned helicopter as well. I think probably the most important tactical advantage that we've seen recently out here in the 7th Fleet is the size of the LCS. Uh, we're about half, uh, about half the size of most of the other ships out here, destroyers, for instance, and that means that we're, um, we work I think, much better with some of the partner nations. Uh, we have improved interoperability. I think that a lot of the nations that we work with over here uh, are more comfortable uh, working with us. Very fast ship, a great new ship, and uh, I think that's probably our, our greatest tactical advantage. Uh, we're just learning right now what the what this ship can do and what the capabilities for the embarked detachments are as well. Uh, and with that, I'll pass it back to the uh, commanding officer for some closing remarks. But uh, thanks for joining us. Good to see everybody. Good night. So hi, I'm Commander Matt Kawas again. I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the ship and had a chance to uh, enjoy talking with some of the incredible sailors that man this ship. Uh, I recommend continuing to catch our adventures on our USS Fort Worth Facebook page. Have a great day.